Good morning. Hi, Carlo Ami with your Wake Up Well 16. Tonight's topic is your two greatest teachers. Now, your greatest teacher, believe it or not, is your ego. Because as you recognize egoic stuff that comes out from you and expresses itself to the world, and you catch yourself and realize that that's not working for you, <laughs> then you can choose to make a more loving response to life. Your other greatest teacher is your relationships, the people that are in your life that are closest to you. And what provoked uh, this tonight, and let me lead with this, um, you know, I caught the last two minutes of an old Simpsons episode uh, this evening, and it's Christmas time, and, you know, Homer, being the guy that he is, uh, he forgot to get Marge a Christmas present. <laughs> so he's frankly going around, uh, you know, uh, Christmas Eve trying to find something, and boom, he can't find anything. The stores are all closed. So he goes back uh, to the house, opens the door, and there's Marge uh, sitting by the fireplace, uh, fire roaring, and, uh, you know, she's sitting there waiting for him, and he comes up to her, and, he, and she looks at him, and she knows he, he's space getting a gift again. He forgot. And she says, you know, I, I kind of thought that might happen, and so I got you a gift that you can give to me. And she gives him this gift, and it's a beautiful framed picture of her and Homie uh, cuddled up together. And Homie says, you know, oh, wow, this is the best, best gift I ever got. It's just amazing. And, you know, uh, it brings up the idea that you know, we can meet each other knowing our challenges and not wanting to take advantage of them. Especially with the, with the one that may be closest to you in your life. Uh, so often, you know, we, we build up points in the power struggle with each other. Somehow or another, being in a relationship is often a power struggle. Which is really silly because the whole idea in relationships is to build trust with each other. But a lot of folks decide they're going to build up points that they can use against the other person in the battle for power, which is really dang silly, isn't it? <laughs> so, when your anniversary is coming up, for example, you know, rather, if you know your husband uh, or partner is uh, uh, forgetful about these kinds of things, then, you know, rather than drop a hint or two here or there, which is maybe the more conscious thing to do, uh, maybe your habit's been to, you know, not make any d gentle reminders, and then when it comes, you've got some more points to sling at him about what an idiot he is. <laughs> okay? So, uh, you might choose something a little closer to what Marge did in the Simpsons episode, uh, and there's a lot of things in between where you can uh, come from a loving place rather than, rather than a place where you're going to build up points against your partner because it's really silly. Crazy. Okay. Uh, it, it brings up what George Carlin used to say about, uh, you know, the essence of the challenge between the sexes. And that is, um, you know, men are stupid and women are crazy. Now, uh, us guys have plenty of problems, uh, challenges with remembering things that women think ought to be pretty darn basic. And women are pretty crazy about things that us guys think, that, oh, geez, you know, what's with her? I don't get it. And... If you're a guy and, you, you know, your girl's always running late for things, then rather than look upon it as something to feel victimized about or to complain at her about or to, to use as a kind of a, a weapon against her, um, maybe you can plan things a little more accordingly uh, so that, you know, if you want her ready by 3 and she's usually 3 hours late, then say, listen, honey, we got to be out here by noon, <laughs> okay? And it's not really a lie. It's just, it's just, it's just working the game. Okay, and it's doing it in a conscious way, <clears throat> not in a way to manipulate anybody, but with the idea that you're looking to build trust and you're looking to accept the other person as they are. And this is a great lesson during the holiday season here where we're getting together with family and people that we may not see that often. And you know, there's a lot of fear that goes up around the holiday season about how is it going to go with Aunt So-and-so that always judges me like crazy. Or what about Uncle who uh, seems a little bit too clingy for me? Or whatever. Uh, Opportunities, if you're intending to be more conscious. 
uh, to choose the loving response, not the one that is designed to either put you in the role of judge or victim. Because that's where most people vacillate back and forth between. And I give this to you humbly. I'm not pretending that I've got it all figured out and I'm practicing it beautifully. I'm doing the best that I can to synthesize it into ideas that I can remember, being a guy, <laughs> and, you know, uh, apply to my life more and more consistently. That's my goal. So what I share with you tonight is an idea about, again, choosing the loving response more and more consistently to everything that you're experiencing in your life, every thought that you have, and to recognize when it's coming from the egoic. And if it's coming from the egoic, whether it's in the external world or whether it's something that, that comes from the imaginary ego that you think's in you, then the only really effective way to deal with it is to remove all your attention and support from it. This is how the ego is released. And this is what I ask you to take into your holiday season with you as you uh, connect with people in your family that you may not see that often. How can you be more loving and accepting of them just as they are, as a gift to yourself and the world? And how much more effective is that going to be than stirring up stuff that's going to create conflict and difficulty? That's the idea I'd ask you to contemplate this holiday season. Bless you.